treat! Hey everybody! Welcome to the Jade and Stitches Show! Trick-or-treating is sort of an art form. You want to collect the most amount of candy with the least amount of effort. And if you're little, that means dragging around a pillowcase or a reusable shopping bag can be kind of cumbersome. <laughs> so we've designed a trick-or-treating bag which is little person friendly. It has built-in handles, which makes opening and closing and gripping relatively easy. It's not so big that it's going to drag on the ground behind them. And once full, it doesn't weigh a ton. This is a fun bag that you can use a crazy ball of yarn on. This is Red Heart Super Saver in neon stripes. And I absolutely love how the striping worked out. You could also use one of those balls of yarn that has the reflective fiber running through it or even glows in the dark. After all, the more visible they are out there, the better. But, before this particular bag collects any candy, it's going to accompany me to a Halloween party. Because I also think that this little sack happens to make a rather festive and fabulous handbag. <laughs> so, let's grab our hooks, grab a fun ball of yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and stitch up a trick-or-treating bag together. In order to make my trick-or-treat bag, I'm using Red Heart Super Saver in neon stripes. So this is a size 4 medium worsted weight yarn. So if you don't have access to this particular yarn, it's a size 4 worsted weight in acrylic that I'm using. But nothing says Halloween to me quite like black and neon stripes. <laughs> You're going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and we're using a 5.5 millimeter hook or an I-9. And once you've got a lot together, we can get started. We're going to begin with a slip knot. Then we're going to chain 31. Once you've chained 31, you're going to find the second chain from the hook and work three half double crochets into it. So second chain from the hook, work three half double crochets into it. Now, you're going to half double crochet into each of the next 28 chains. Just once, one half double crochet for each of the next 28 chains. And that should leave you with one chain left, and I'll catch up with you there. All right, 28 half double crochets later, you should have one chain left in your foundation chain row. You're going to work three half double crochets into that last chain. And that will spin us around so that we're looking at the bottom of our foundation chain row. So you can see all of the little chains that you worked your half double crochets into. You've worked three in the last one. You're now going to work a half double crochet in the bottom of every single one of those 28 half double crochets that you just made. That'll bring you back to the beginning and I'll catch up with you there. Once you've worked a half double crochet into the bottom of each of those 28 half double crochets, that brings you back to the three half double crochets that we began the whole thing with. Now, I want to point something out. This little guy right here, I'm highlighting it with my yarn needle, that is chain number 31 from your foundation chain row. This is also what the turning chain looks like at the beginning of all other rows. Do not confuse it for your first real half double crochet. Make sure you skip that. You want to join with a slip stitch to the top of your first half double crochet, and that should give you a total of 62 stitches. That was row one, and we are now working on row two, which is an even row. Even rows are going to alternate a little bit differently from odd rows, and this is how. Even row begins with a chain one, you're going to work a half double crochet into that same stitch that you joined in. So if you pull up, it should make a little hole for you. And now you're going to half double crochet in every stitch all the way around, but you have to count. Once you get to stitch number 62, so your first half double crochet is worked into the same stitch that you joined in, that counts as one, two, three, so on and so forth, count to 62. Once you get to 62, I will catch up with you there and I'll show you what it looks like. Once you've worked 62 half double crochets all the way around, you'll notice that your bottom is curling. You should be able to have a little bit of a boat-like effect at the other corner. 
and over here you should have what looks like a full stitch left. That is the false stitch. You see how the chain one has literally come out of that? So on every even row you skip over the false stitch, find the top of the first half double crochet you made and join with a slip stitch. You should still have 62 stitches and you've got a little bit of a boat thing happening now. Every odd row begins with a chain one and instead of working into the same stitch as joining, you're going to go right into the next stitch. So chain one, half double crochet into the stitch right next to it, and then count. You want 62 half double crochets all the way around, and when you get to number 62, I'll catch up with you and show you what that looks like. When you get around to the beginning of every odd row, 62, number 62 stitch should be worked into the false stitch. And you can see that's the stitch that the little chain one came out of. 62 will be worked into the false stitch on every odd row. Make sure you skip that little chain one and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet. You should still have 62 stitches in your entire row. And when we alternate back and forth like this, so every even row begins with a chain one and a half double crochet in the same stitches joining, you crochet 62 stitches all the way around and you skip the false stitch, this guy right here. Every odd row, you chain one and you single cro half double crochet, I should say, into the next stitch, not the same one that you joined in get all the way around and number 62 is worked into the false stitch on every odd row. When we alternate back and forth like that, it more or less keeps the seam of our little bag in one place. It'll just sort of wiggle just a little bit, but it won't wander across the back of our bag. So you can continue to work half double crochets in every stitch all the way around, Alternate your odd and even rows so that your join just sort of bounces back and forth over one stitch. It'll keep it more or less straight. And after you've worked a few rows, I'll catch up with you. All right, I have completed 10 rows so far in my new little trick-or-treat candy bag. And gosh, I love how those stripes are looking. <laughs> there's the back, there's the front. So, 10 rows in, and because I'm alternating even and odd rows, and I'm changing where I start um, every even row, every odd row, you'll see that at the end of row 10, I am still at the side of my bag. So my little seam has not migrated across the back of my bag. So I'm going to continue doing that every even row. I chain one single crochet into the same stitch, and then skip the false stitch. Every odd row, I chain one single crochet into the next stitch, and then use the false stitch on the way back. So keep doing that and your seam will stick to the side of your bag. So that's 10 rows in total. I'm going to put in another 15 rows and then we're gonna add some grips, some handles. So you wanna get to row 25 and then come on back and we'll add some handles. All right, I have finished 25 rows in total. Now we are going to add our handles. So, row 26 is an even row. We begin by chaining one and half double crocheting in the same stitch as our fasten or our join. You're going to half double crochet in each of the next 11 stitches. All right, including the half double crochet, the first one you worked, plus 11, you should have 12 half double crochets. Now we're going to chain 10. Once you have 10 chains, be very careful not to twist it. Now you're going to skip 10 stitches, so count. Find the 10th stitch, and then into the stitch next to that, so number 11, you're going to half double crochet, be very careful not to twist your chains. There we go. You should have something that looks like this. And now you're going to half double crochet into each of the next 20 stitches. So including the first half double crochet you work after all the skips, you should have 21 half double crochets. Now we're going to chain 10 again. Be 
careful not to twist them. Skip 10 stitches. Find the one next to it, which is number 11, and half double crochet into it, taking care not to twist your stitches. And then you can half double crochet back round to the beginning. Remember to skip the false stitch because we are on an even row. You should have something that looks like this. There's your two handles. We've got two more rows to go. We're now entering row 27. Row 27 is an odd row. So we're going to chain one and half double crochet into the next stitch. So not the same one. Half double crochet into the next stitch and half double crochet into every single stitch around and that includes your chains. So you should have 10 chains. You should have another 10 half double crochet across this handle and the one across the back. You will still have 62 stitches at the end of this row. And then we're going to do one more row of half double crochet and we'll be finished. At the end of row 27, you should have two very obvious looking handles that sit right opposite each other. We're going to do one more row just for an added little bit of strength and then we're done. So row 28 is an even row. You chain one to begin. You half double crochet in the same stitch as your join. Half double crochet in each stitch around. Skip the false stitch. Join to the top of the first half double crochet and we will fasten off. At the end of row 28, join with a slip stitch to the top of your half double crochet. Snip your yarn and fasten off. Take your yarn needle and you can thread up that long tail and weave it in on the inside of your bag back and forth through some of those stitches. Now I know this is a little tricky to see because I'm using black, but we've done this many times before. So just weave it back and forth through the same sets of stitches a few times. This will make sure that it doesn't want to unravel on you. Don't pull it too tight because you don't want to pull any of your nice stitch work out of alignment. And once you're done with all of that, if you have any excess that you don't think you need, you can trim it off. And that is that. There. One awesome trick-or-treating bag. I love this bag. It is perfect for trick-or-treating and it's also perfect for a handbag. You can make this in any color to match any outfit or even any costume. <laughs> That's it for this week everyone. I hope you had fun making this little bag along with me and we will see you soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty and have an awesome Halloween everyone. Bye!